you think of protein, you probably think of dudes with massive muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger circa the mid-1980s. I am Arnold. I pick things up and put them down. If you're younger, you may think of people like John Cena. But protein is so much more than just a conversation starter for meatheads. If you crack open those dusty old biology books that you probably have lying around somewhere, you'll see that protein is often referred to as one of the building blocks of life. Now, I'll try to keep the sciencey stuff to a minimum, but here's essentially what you have to know in a nutshell. When we eat proteins, we break them down into small peptides and amino acids. These have a variety of functions in our body, including repairing and replacing worn out cells, building stuff, giving us energy, plus transporting other things throughout our body via our bloodstream. There are also two types of amino acids, essential and non-essential. Essential means that we need to get them from our diet, and you probably guessed it, but non-essential means that we can usually make them ourselves in our body. These amino acids are important for your day-to-day -day function, weight management, your immune system function, how full you feel when you eat, your metabolism in general, and weight management and of course for muscle building and athletic performance. So, as you can see, protein is not all just about getting ripped, like some people may think. But how much do you really need to get on a day-to-day -day basis? Honestly, there's a lot of varying research on this topic, and the answer is it depends. It depends on you, and it depends on your goals and what you're trying to accomplish from a fitness perspective. Now, for those of you thinking, sweet, I'm just gonna have some massive porterhouse steak with dinner and call it a day, boom, all the protein I need, it doesn't quite work like that. Our protein actually ebbs and flows as far as levels go throughout the day. Essentially what happens is when we absorb protein through our digestive system, the amino acids get absorbed into our bloodstream into an amino acid pool, which is actually, for the record, different than how we store carbs and fats in our bodies, but we'll get to that in a different video. So, as the day goes on, your protein levels increase right after you eat and decrease immediately afterwards. So it's not just enough to eat the total amount of protein that you need, it's also important to keep in mind when you're eating that amount of protein throughout the day. So for people who are training, it's important to actually get the protein before and after you work out within that time frame because muscle and protein breakdown actually tends to occur during those times. So you need to replenish those protein stores to be able to fully build the muscle that you're trying to build. For a person who may not be as active, it's still important to spread your protein throughout the day in terms of your meals and also the snacks you may eat. But it is important to replenish those protein levels after you exercise if you really want to focus on building muscle and optimizing your workout. You may have questions about what type of protein is important to consume before and after a workout. Research shows that plant protein and animal protein is just as effective. So as long as you're getting the protein and it's a quality source, you should be good to go before and after a workout. Now before you go breaking out the calculators to calculate the exact amount of protein that you should get on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a much, much simpler way. And this is good for most people. We follow the Precision Nutrition Calorie Counting Guide. So for protein, we want to focus on using the palm of our hand. For men, try getting two palm-sized portions of protein in every meal. Women should try for one. Obviously, your palm size is going to vary person to person. The bigger you are, the bigger your palm is, and the more protein that you need. These are the guidelines for an average person. We'll go into more detail in other videos about the carbohydrate and fat content in your diet, but it's important to make sure that your protein is consistent. Remember that these are just guidelines. The average active male needs about six to eight palm-sized portions of protein every day, while the average female who is active needs about four to six palm-sized portions of protein every day. Now, before you go trying to cut all your food into palm-shaped portions, remember that these are just guidelines. They should guide your thought process. This is a way to make things much more simpler, so please don't take it and make it a little more complicated than it needs to be. As long as you're getting about a palm or two palms, depending on, on your uh, preferences, of protein at every one of your meals, you should be fine. Also keep in mind that the sources of protein that you consume should come predominantly from whole food sources. When I say whole food, I mean things that are naturally one ingredient and you don't really have a label for it because it's just that whole natural ingredient. For example, a piece of broccoli is just a piece of broccoli. You don't have a label for that. We need a variety of amino acid types in our system. And from getting a balanced diet of different types of protein sources and other things in our diet, we naturally get all these amino acids that we need. So yes, that means that you should not consume a protein shake with every meal because even though there are a lot of quality proteins out there in terms of protein shakes, it's still a semi-processed food, so we should have that in moderation in our diet. Keep in mind that it's not just about the protein-dense foods when it comes to your daily protein intake. 
For example, if you're sitting down to a nice steak dinner and your steak on the side has some broccoli and maybe a baked potato, that broccoli and the baked potato also have protein in them too, and that definitely counts. Most foods have some protein in them. Thanks so much for watching again, I really appreciate it. For those of you who are on the go or those of you who are tired of hearing me talk about meat and maybe vegans or vegetarians, our next video about troubleshooting getting enough protein in your diet has a ton of different options because it is of course possible to get your daily protein intake needs without having to eat meat if that's something that you choose to do. Thanks again for watching, subscribe to our channel if you found this useful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.